Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications, and Abundance Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget the podcast, netnewsnetwork.net. We have everybody's favorite sports talk show host. His name is A.P. <laughs> Stedham. He's been with us a long time. A.P., welcome back to the show. Hey, Donna, so so grateful for being on your show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we're tickled to have you. And also, he has another show that airs here on Friday, Football Friday at 4. And that's AP and Kelly, as we see it. Football Friday, 4 p.m. Central on the IC Radio Network. We love it. We're tickled. Well, a lot of stuff's beginning to happen now. We're hearing a little bit of chatter out there about football. Yeah, Donna, it's interesting. You know, the SEC, we had those meetings in Destin, Florida. So that was uh, all the athletic directors in the football, men's basketball, women's basketball, presidents. So, but Donna, we have these two teams coming into the Southeastern Conference, Texas and Oklahoma. So you have to rearrange that schedule. So next year when they're uh, part of the SEC, they're going to be an announcement Wednesday. We'll have known some of this information. Wednesday will be the eight-game schedule for one year, eight game schedule, league schedule. So they're going to make that announcement this week. So that'll be interesting to see what rivalries are maintained and then what new opponents you might play. So Texas and Oklahoma coming on board 2024 and the SEC chose to just remain with the eight games at this present time for the 23 season and the 24th season when Oklahoma and Texas arrive and then moving forward, I'm thinking it's going to be the nine games, Donna. Maybe they'll have a format of six teams where they rotate and maybe three permanent rivals or maybe one permanent rival and you rotate two out of the three. I mean, there's all kind of uh, options as far as the mm-hmm. schedule, but it'll be fun. And Donna, people adapt. I mean, they may not be happy with some of the matchups uh, down the road in, in the future, but they'll adapt and you'll get a chance – a player should get a chance, Donna, in the four-year period if they, they stay on campus to be home and away with every team. I think it's a four-year r- rotation. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. And, and we do. You know, we'll fuss and gripe and complain, carry on everything else, but we always yeah. adjust. <laughs> yeah, right. So it, it's going to be a lot of fun to have those two teams come over. They're big brands. In other words, Oklahoma, Donna, as we know, it's not a big state. Right. It's not a very big state population, but it's a big brand. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we know Texas is big, but, you know, don't tell the people of Alaska. because I think Texas fits in there a couple of times. Right. (laughs) Yeah, Don't tell them because I'm I'm married to a Texan. They're proud. Right. 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 So, he know, he knows exactly, uh, you know, Texas is big. We know that. And uh, they're trying to rebuild that program. And Oklahoma is in a rebuilding phase as well. So it's, it's kind of interesting that the SEC, you normally those two teams are top 15, top 20 teams, top five, whatever it may be uh, in certain years, but they're really in the rebuilding phase, uh, phase at this time. So look, look for an uptick. Maybe the recruiting gets a little bit better coming over to the SEC. Maybe they have more players, especially on the defensive and offensive lines. You've got to be above average, Donna. At, uh, at that position because you have to protect your quarterback because we know if you don't protect the quarterback, it affects everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. So let's talk a little bit about the brand. What makes some team a big brand? Right. <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll just work from uh, speaking about Oklahoma first because, as we said, not a populated state, but they had mm-hmm. success over over time, Donna. Mm-hmm. So generations have grown up thinking about, oh, Oklahoma, that's a, they have a good football team. Mm-hmm. You know, we know they have the good softball. They've been winning softball championships forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just recently won the uh, college 
uh, softball championship, national championship. But football, they've been good uh, way back into the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, 80s, 90s, all the way through the, you know this century as well. So the brand over time, even though you, you're not a populated state, you can uh, branch out because there's other states down that don't have, let's say, a big time football program. So somebody could say, hey, I'm going to adopt Oklahoma as my team. Mm -hmm. And then you have the state of Texas, a big populated state, uh, over a thousand high schools play football, I believe. And they've been good through the years. Uh, they, they've struggled recently, but they've had their, their moments in the sunshine and been national champions. So when you think of Texas, you think of high school football. Mm -hmm. Great ball players, you know, because everybody recruits the state of Texas. Now the SEC, half the SEC, or if not more, is going to be searching Texas for ball players. So they have a chance to come in here and do some spectacular thing. But it's all dependent, Donna, uh, on the leadership, as we know. Mm -hmm. You have to have good leadership at the top because that's the person that can recruit and develop the players and hire the the good assistants on his staff, her staff, they can coach the players because the head coach can't do everything down. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got to have good people in, in place on your staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that makes everything a success, a business and what have you. But so it sounds yeah. like you're saying that it's either population or is going to be, you know, the, the, I mean, I think that's a, that's a, that makes a whole lot of sense. It really does. Yeah, when you, you think of Texas, you're the you're the university, yeah, you're the University of Texas football coach. Over one thousand high schools are in your state. You're the flagship university. If you can't feel the football team with one thousand high schools, then the wrong person is in charge. And then Oklahoma is right next door. Okay, they border Texas, so they come over all the time. Even if they get ten, you know, five to five to ten players out of Dallas. Uh, they're going to have a good football team at Oklahoma, and that's been the, the standard at Oklahoma. Usually, uh, and maybe half the team was from Texas. Right. And so they want to go back to their home state and beat Texas every year in that great mm -hmm. rivalry that is played in uh, October during the time when they have the Texas State Fair in Dallas. Mm -hmm. So what is the most recruited state? Is it Texas? Yeah, Texas is one. There's Florida, Texas, California. Uh -huh. And then the ones below that, um, I say Ohio, there's quite a few players in Pennsylvania. And then a, a place who's one of the greatest places to recruit ball players per capita is Louisiana. Okay, that's surprising. I would have yeah. thought you would have said Alabama. I, well, I guess because we've had, you know been number one out there so much. Yeah, Alabama's there, but I think Louisiana is, is the head of Alabama, Donna. Um, they have a tremendous amount of players in that state that not only play for LSU, but um, quite a few teams are in. You know, Alabama recruits over there and Ole Miss and Texas comes over there once in a while. Florida State is looking down that I-10 corridor. Uh, in around New Orleans and other parts of the state. So, yeah, Louisiana, they have um, a Boku amount of players mm -hmm. per capita. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Alabama, I mean, it's, and so then there's a difference between recruiting and then who has the winningest team. You know, who's <laughs> been in number one? The, uh, I mean, Alabama, you got to say the Roll Tiders right here. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Alabama's a school, Donna, that, you know, they had championships in the 20s, 30s, I think maybe in the 40s uh, on some polls, 60s, 70s, uh, 90s, and this century, both decades. So that's quite a, an extended period of time to have a national championship. There's not, there's not a school that can make that claim. Mm -hmm. not, not even a place like Notre Dame. Notre Dame, their last championship town in 1988. Oh, wow. I thought it was, yeah. That's a, that's a while. That's a, that's that's been a while, right, for Notre Dame. Uh -huh. So do you see champion. them emerging? Do you see them emerging the next couple of years? I I think you know they have a um a defensive coordinator who became the head coach. Marcus Freeman played at Ohio State. I think he has a good nucleus. He's bringing in a quarterback from Wake Forest, Sam Hartman. He's thrown uh -huh. for probably over ten thousand yards already in his, in his college career. So I think that's probably an upgrade for them on offense. And we all know that if you, you can have a good offense to keep the other teams 
offense off the field, um, that helps your defense. And Notre Dame, I think, with Brian Kelly, when he was there, you know, he was a, he was at LSU his very first year last year. He's a Hall of Fame coach before he arrived at LSU. He was on the verge mm-hmm. of, of building a, a championship team. You know, he made the playoffs a couple times. I think they just needed a, a little more speed on the perimeter to compete. But, no, you know, Notre Dame, they're not very far away, um, I, I don't think. It just depends on the speed. you got to get the speed to contend with all these other uh, top teams. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael sent an email. By the way, if you have any questions for AP, you can go ahead and send an email my way, Donna at Donna's Edge.com. And so Michael had a question about, and, and I wanted to get into the emerging of teams because we saw this happening with Tennessee. You and I right. saw that. Yes. So his question about that was about, he's a Tennessee fan. He's glad to see that we speak often of Tennessee and their yeah. success. So his question is, why does it take some, so long uh, for some teams to emerge? And then some people, some teams seem to do it overnight. What's right. the compass there? Right. Donna, it's the leadership at the top. You saw where Tennessee had a number of coaches through the years. Josh Heifel arrived from uh, Central Florida, along with his, his athletic director, uh, White, um, and – you know, people kind of made fun of that situation because they hired a search firm, I think, and what he essentially did was he walked down to the hallway because he was the athletic director at um, Central Florida. Josh Heupel was the coach, and he hired him, and it's, he's been very successful uh, thus far, and he's on the rise, and, you know, his goal is, of course, to challenge Georgia. Georgia is a two-time defending national champion, also in the SEC East, but they're going to get rid of those divisions anyway, but but – He's got a fantastic offensive mind and philosophy that he's implemented at Tennessee. So they're able to score a lot of points because they have, you know, and as, as your, your guest uh, and your audience member noted, um, you know, who would be recognized that Tennessee has been deficient on the defensive side, but now he's, he's rejuvenated that offense where they can contend with anybody. So that's a good start in this era of football a lot of points are scored um, than, let's say, 20 years ago. You, and you must have an above-average quarterback, and we, we see Joe Milton. Joe Milton, the, he's transferred from Michigan. This is his third year. Excellent bowl game against uh, Michigan. I mean, against uh, Clemson, I'm sorry. And so he's he's looking forward to an outstanding season. So I actually spoke to Josh Heupel about it um, down in Destin. So, you know, they, they realize they got to get better on defense offensively, and get people to catch the football because they're going to get an opportunity with that type of offense. They spread the ball around. Mm-hmm. Um, Nikki has a question for you, and this pertains to Joe Namath. And she said she's always been a huge Joe Namath fan, but she wants to know your opinion. Was he was he so famous because he knew how to market himself or because he was really that talented? A little bit of both, I think. Joe was a tremendous talent. You know, when he arrived at the University of Alabama, Coach Bryant, that he was the best athlete he ever coached at that time. And, of course, Joe is famous for the quick release. And then if you think about it, um, he's been marketed over 50 years, Donna. Mm-hmm. He just turned 80 years old. Well, that's um, hard to believe, isn't it? Recently, Joe right. 80. Yeah, so so think about it. He's been, he's been on the television promoting products since, oh, about 65. So I'm an, that's almost – Almost uh, getting to be 60 years, right? Almost. Uh-huh. So that's, th- so that's the longest. I, I, it has to be in television. I don't know anybody who's been on TV promoting and marketing products and uh, services for s- almost 60 years. He, it's got to be the longest. And it's from the game of football, and he played at the University of Alabama. So I think that's pretty interesting. I think he yeah. still yeah. has fans out there. And she yeah. said to Peggy, she's only 25 years old. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's amazing that he still has that following with the young people, kind of like Elvis in music. Oh, yes. Yeah. Joe is very popular. He's, he's If you get a chance to meet him, he's friendly and engaging. And you, you should tell her to uh, if she can watch the HBO special. I was part of that documentary in some small degree, but a very good story. Um, it was told in that documentary about Joe Namath. 
Well, that's her part B question. So she was said she she's apparently been a longtime listener to this show and to you. And so she said she had heard that you had interviewed him before. So let's go into a commercial break. We're going to be right back in just a few minutes. Hang in there, y'all. Lots about Joan Namath today. At La Mugs Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to LamonesMex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Lamones you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Lamones Mexican Restaurant. Let Rhonda at Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC take the burden off you for all your tax needs. I know because Rhonda has been taking care of my business since 2013. I feel Rhonda works for me because she knows the direct questions to ask to better benefit my unique business in order for me to get back the biggest refund possible. Rhonda is an ongoing student and she knows tax laws are in a constant change every year. Call 256-281-9903 for an appointment to take the dread out of getting your taxes done. Rhonda is located at 11968 U.S. Highway 431 in Boaz. Again, that number is 256-281-9903. And let Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC champion your personal and business taxes. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need, toys at Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blunt Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience Southern hospitality at its finest. 
We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018. Good afternoon. My name is Donna and I am your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications. That's local to the North Alabama part and then worldwide syndicated on Abundance Television, found on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire. Don't forget the podcast, netsnewsnetwork.net. Joan Namath seems to have hijacked the show today. So Nikki is a huge fan. And so she wants to know, because she has watched you on the show several times, she wants to know what he was like to interview. Yeah, Joe's been doing interviews for 60 60 plus years. And he's very friendly, he's personable, and he'll he'll he have extended answers to your questions. And he I just I've always enjoyed him. He's always been one of my favorite, you know. I grew up watching Joe Namath and Kenny Stabler, you know, because Kenny was from Foley and of course my dad was from around this area as well. And so I always knew about uh, Kenny Stabler and we were, became New York Jets fans because of Joe Namath. You know, we knew him about, we knew about him before anybody in our part of the country. Uh, you know, we heard about him at Alabama and watched him and then he came to the New York Jets. So that, that's why we were New York Jets fans. But yeah, Joe is, is he's a lot of fun and, and he just, he enjoys the interview, okay? Some players, it's kind of like it's difficult after you ask them the question, their their answers are short and and uh, not very long. But, but Joe actually um, makes it fun to do the interview. Mm-hmm. I always wondered why he didn't get into politics. Yeah, I don't think Joe was a person <laughs> ever wanted to be in politics, no. He's a sport, but uh, not not that sport. <laughs> yeah, that would be quite the sport. You know, a lot of players do. They get right in it, you know. They do. Yeah, they do. Sure do. Yeah, I've, I've had, like, for instance, Heath Shuler, the former University of Tennessee quarterback. He's from North Carolina, Western North, North Carolina. And he became a congressman, I think, for uh, three terms, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, AP Sedum is with us right now, also host of As We See It with AP and Kelly. So what's going on this week with that show? Yeah, we're going to one of the topics we're going to discuss is Texas A&M, Donna. We're trying to go through a couple teams mm-hmm. each week um, leading up to the season. And this week we're, we're going to discuss Texas A&M uh, with Olin Buchanan. He's been covering A&M for decades. And then we're probably going to probably going to delve into them looking at LSU, maybe to get somebody to speak about LSU because, you know, they defeated Alabama, won the SEC West and Brian Kelly's first division. So we're, we're trying to go through all the teams. I think we've discussed probably six to eight so far in the last oh, four or five weeks. So we, we still have, uh, you know, there's 14 teams. So we still have a half a dozen or so to discuss in the coming weeks. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, now, we. by the way, if you would like to send a question to AP, if you'll send it to my email, that would be great. Uh, and I need to forward those on to you. See, AP has no idea what questions are going to be asked. So he's he's really, he's, he's right on target. He, he has it. So you can send that to Donna at Donna'sEdge.com. Most of the questions this week have been, what do you think about our regular ones? Alabama, Auburn, Tennessee, Georgia? Yeah. Yeah, Clemson, all the, Clemson's yeah. in there too. Yeah, Clemson always finds its way into the picture. They're more like an SEC team because of their physicality on the offensive and defensive lines. But uh, Alabama and Auburn, they're both going to be searching for the starting quarterback. So it's vitally important. Um, normally a team, Donna, well, not normally, but sometimes the team has the luxury of playing, let's say, let's say two or three games where you can opt out with a couple of different quarterbacks in the game and, and see who performs the best. But Alabama's got that second game against the University of Texas, who's going to come to town, I think, for the first time in about 100 years or in the state of Alabama to play the Crimson Tide. Uh, they have a host of receivers, very good, excellent quarterbacks, depth on that team. They can score a lot of points. So Alabama, they're going to have to find out pretty quick about their quarterback situation. Maybe, I don't know, they might have to use a couple of quarterbacks the first first two games, Donna, um, because maybe nobody's going to be a clear-cut winner of the position. But that's something to 
to look forward to with anticipation. I know Nick Saban, as most coaches, he probably won't announce the starting quarterback. Uh-huh. Uh, the opening game, they'll probably just trot out to the huddle, and then that's where you find out who will be the, the, the leader of the team. And then yeah, Auburn is it's kind of like it could be an issue. It sounds like Saban's could, not really sure yet. Could, yeah, could be. Could be an issue with that. We don't know. I mean, you got the transfer from Notre Dame, Tyler Buckner, and then we have the, the, the transfer from Michigan State to Auburn. So both teams are entertaining quarterbacks that played in the Midwest, cold weather, and they're trying to see if they fit into the system. So uh, Alabama and Auburn both are essentially in the same position with regards to the quarterback. And so I know that makes both fan bases uh, uneasy, <laughs> to say the least. There's a little unrest least, right? going on there, a little unrest. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you don't know who, you, who your leader. You don't know your leader at this point. Mm-hmm. And we, we all know that in this quarterback-centric era, you better have somebody, at, as I always say, above average because it's very difficult to win, um, let's say, above eight games without your quarterback being very good. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it sounds like it's almost a toss-up this coming season. He's going to well, be up in the top five. Yeah, I mean, Alabama has the better overall talent. There, there's no question. But we all know the game is played on the field. It's not played on the piece of paper judging talent. It's all on the field and how you play that day. And then who's healthy. And then who's adapted throughout the course of the season to be a better football team. But, um, but Auburn, um, you know, they're going to they're gonna challenge some people. They'll probably surprise some people on, on a given Saturday because he frees he's very a very good offensive coach and he's rallying his team and he brought in some transfers he upgraded i think the offensive line for sure and i think at the wide receiver position those are two areas that were lacking with um sec caliber type players i believe yeah. difference makers yeah well do you see them, them emerging do you see them being in the same place tennessee has been in the past couple say three years yeah, I see. I see Tennessee challenging Georgia um, because the game uh, against Georgia will be in Knoxville in November. Uh, yeah. Tennessee, Tennessee has some tough ball games before that happens. Though they have to travel to Alabama, and that's going to be difficult because I can't. The last time they beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa, it's got to be it's over ten years for sure because mm-hmm. they broke that streak last year, fourteen, fifteen years in a row. So um, they're going to find out about themselves. Um, when they traveled to Tuscaloosa in October. But, no, Alabama, Tennessee, they're, right now they're probably on – they're probably about equal at this at this point. Um, like I say, Joe Milton, he's more an established quarterback for, for Tennessee at this point, I think, even though he played a short time at the end of the season after Henry Hooker was, was injured. Now, now, Tyler Buckner coming in from Notre Dame, he hasn't played a lot of football, been a starter very much. So, But they're looking for him to – probably take the position over because they brought in the offensive coordinator of Notre Dame, Tommy Reese. So I don't think you travel from South Bend to Tuscaloosa, Alabama to sit on the bench and you have your offensive coordinator (laughs) there with you in South Bend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Lots of things happening. A little bit longer, a little bit over a minute left in this segment. Why do you want to tell the folks before you go? Yeah, I would say um, on our show, we're going to be talking about the schedule done. We'll find out those teams, what rivalries are maintained, what new teams are on the schedule. And, um, you know, we're going to find out who feels that they, they're they happy with the schedule and that some teams will be unhappy and some fan bases will not uh, be pleased with the commissioner's uh, announcement of, of their team schedule. So uh, we're going to watch that with great anticipation and we'll have some discussion. But, Donna, once the game start, it doesn't matter. You have to win. Doesn't matter That's your schedule. True. You have to win. You have to win and compete. Yeah. That's true. AP, hey, thank you so much for being on the show as always. Hey, thank you, Donna. Thank you so much for having me. And you'll get a lot of AP on Fridays. You've got the football Friday at two o'clock. Uh, and then no at four. And then you're also going to see him around one o'clock on Friday with this show right here. But again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Donna. I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can find us on television channel 182 on Charter, Abundant Television Syndicated, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget the podcast, Net News Network.net. 
Thank you, AP, for being on the show. Thank you, Donna. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications, and Abundance Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget the podcast. You know we're on podcast now? Yes. This is so awesome. Netnewsnetwork.net. I just wanted to say just a quick disclosure about netnewsnetwork.net. Mm-hmm. If you get your feelings hurt really easy, you don't want to watch this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Lots of fantastic talk show hosts are on there. And I'm just glad to be part of it. And I do appreciate uh, Maury uh, inviting me to have my show on this podcast. Yeah. I think it's pretty awesome. But again, thank you so much for watching. I have my very dear friend with me right now. Her name is LaRue Hardinger. She Aww. is with the Marine Toys for Tots Foundation. And man, we've been going to this. Or, well, you've been going at it. I, I get to report it for uh, how many years now? Well, now you kind of took part in yeah. <laughs> yeah. But So you're coordinator, right? I'm the coordinator. So, now, what does a coordinator do? Everything. <laughs> I was going to say, okay, let's make it quicker. What does a coordinator not do? Do you sweep the floors? Uh, well, you've done yes, that. Yes, I, I do that. Never mind. So you just make sure this whole thing is going. I'm the chief cook going. and bottle washer. Mm-hmm. So, and the Marine Toys for Tots Foundation has been around how long? Well, we just celebrated our 75th year. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, our local one is, we're in our 11th campaign. Mm-hmm. I was there almost at the very start, so I've been hanging around with yeah. you for, what, 10 years now? She knows as much about this as I do. No, really. I never <laughs> could know. <laughs> There's so I'm many. thinking about just kind of letting her, you know, be the uh, no coordinator. Way. I I'll would not know what to do. <laughs> I would be like, all of the Marines would be making fun of me all the time. So, But there are so many things, so many spokes to this wheel that make it work. That's true. There are. But the main we, thing is everybody has a heart for well, it. Well, there is, and I am paraphrasing this, the mission statement of the uh, Marine Toys for Tots Foundation, mm-hmm. which is nationwide. Uh, and that is, it's a simple thing. It is to get the community involved, to collect toys, new toys, mm-hmm. and or uh, donate cash donations or, you know, of course, uh, monetary donations. Mm-hmm. Uh, to buy new toys and get them into the hands of children who would normally not get anything for Christmas and uh, in our coverage area and 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 that's not all that's not all they had one more thing to it which really to me means more than anything I mean yes it means a lot getting toys to kids at Christmas who would not get anything but it says in order to bring hope, to give them hope for the future. Mm-hmm. And then most of them, and you would be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't, at the number of people who come up to us and say, uh, you know what, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. uh, our family got help from Toys for Tots, and therefore mm-hmm. I want to donate. And they, and they do, they, give, they grow up to give back. Mm-hmm. And it creates better citizens out of them. Mm-hmm. It makes them have a heart for the same children that are experiencing the same difficulties. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's to bring hope. And if you stop and think about it, hope is really right up there with almost the most important things you can think of. Because without hope, what do people do? They give up. Mm-hmm. And many people even go so far as to take their own lives just Mm -hmm. because they feel like there is no hope and it's not going to get any better. And it's not only for the kids, but for the parents too, because I've been on the situation and I was divorced Mm -hmm. once. And I remember that first Christmas, I was like, 
Mm -hmm. He's gonna have Santa Claus has got to come see him. Mm -hmm. And I was sweating that year out. I I did not. I took it harder than he could. He did. Sure, you hate to see your children uh, go through that when they're maybe used to getting a little more. And I went through the same thing with my three little boys, uh, single mm -hmm. mom and um, between jobs and. Uh, I signed up for public housing. Mm -hmm. I signed up, you know, with the employment agencies, and mm -hmm. they even put me in uh, was it Section and Eight Housing? Was it Section mm -hmm. Eight Housing? And I was fortunate enough to get a house instead of an apartment, but um, that only lasted six months. But for that time, mm -hmm. I also had to get help with. Uh, things such as toys. So I know exactly how it feels. It's terrifying for the single parent, man, man or woman. We do have single uh, men, uh, excuse me, yes, single men who ha are parents, do have, you know, custody of the children. But I've seen it all. You have uh, grandparents, too, that are raising their grandkids. Can every, they get help as well? Yes, they can. They can ha get help if they are um, the legal guardians of those grandchildren, they mm -hmm. can. And in some cases, if it's in the process of them gaining the custody of the children, but it hasn't been completed, if they can just show that they're in the process yeah. of, of doing what they need to do with the uh, officials in the court system in order to, and with the DHR, to get this uh, under control and make sure the children are cared for in their home. If they can show that um, when they just turn in their application, uh, that's all they need to do. And it's really very simple. If you want to apply, go to, go to the DHR in Fort Payne, uh, 2301 Briarwood Avenue, South um, West, and um, just uh, go into the food stamp office. It's now called the Food Assistance Office, and it's very short and sweet. They, you can pick up an application, fill it out there, and turn it in, or you can take it home and fill it out. But if you do want to do it there and get it over with, which I would recommend, um, just take with you something that shows you are who you are, <laughs> your ID. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a driver's license. It could be a passport. It could be something like this. Mm -hmm. Or it could just be a photo, a government issued photo ID. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, after we know that you really are this person, we have to know you live in DeKalb County because our coverage area is just DeKalb County as far mm -hmm. as Toys for Tots. Now, the Marine Corps League, the Northeast Alabama Marine Corps League, is actually the sponsor of this program. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they cover all of Northeast Alabama, but we are two separate nonprofits. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to reapply each spring to be reaccepted into the program of, of <coughs> excuse me, of the uh, Marine Toys for Tots. Mm -hmm. And based on our previous, um, you know, experience and performance and so forth, um, of course, we've always been reaccepted in the program, into the program. And then I myself, I have to apply uh, as coordinator, and trust me, they do a thorough background check uh, before. Uh, but that's that's comforting for you to know that every coordinator has a thorough background check before they're put in charge of this. Um, and we have nothing to hide; totally transparent. Uh, they they audit all of our records uh, internally, and also. Uh, they even send someone to count any leftover toys <laughs> that we have because technically they are their toys. It is their money we are collecting mm -hmm. and we send it to them. They put it on our purchasing card which is only used by the coordinator to purchase toys or, mm -hmm. or supplies for like, say for instance, paper towels for our warehouse for while our ladies, our team is bagging toys, things like toilet paper, <laughs> things like that, <laughs> you know. Um, but we have to keep it at a ratio of um, no more, uh, we cannot go beyond 15%, uh, 85 toys, 15% supplies. However, I would like to brag on our, our particular campaign because this past year we kept it at 3%. Oh, wow. So, uh, no doubt. She knows how to squeeze a penny out of every <laughs> nickel, I'm telling you. Well, well yeah. 
I'm pretty good. That uh, sounds like, yeah, it does. And it says a lot about the whole industry. But I can't do it without the cooperation of the vendors. I mean, excuse me, the, uh, the person who is selling me this item, okay? The businesses. So when I tell them who I am, what I'm doing, and uh, ask them if they can, you know, help us out by giving a discount. And by the way, any discount they do give us, uh, which they usually do give us, help us out. Mm -hmm. um, if they choose to do so, uh, we can provide with them a letter, uh, you know, that they can use for tax deduction purposes mm -hmm. if they want that. There's several who just say, no, uh, that's okay. But then there are some who do want that. Mm -hmm. So, long story short, uh, without the help of the community, we could not do this. So we thank you from the bottom of our heart. But back on the topic, so I don't get off track of the uh, <clears throat> application process. Because I do, that's not far away. October may seem far away. And you're going to think, you guys are going to be thinking about Halloween. Uh, so mark it on your calendar so you won't forget. Uh, and the closer, you, I mean, the longer you wait, the closer it gets to Halloween. You forget, it's even easier to forget. So uh, just take with you your photo ID, uh, something to show that these are your children or that you have legal custody of them. And to show that they're children, your children, you can take their birth certificate, their insurance cards, whatever. Um, and then uh, we need to know that you live in DeKalb County, so current utility bill with your name on it. With current. It, with current. Current, current <laughs> with uh, the address, of course. And then, of course, um, we need just to know, get an idea of, okay, why you're here, uh, what's going on in your life, are you having, you know, and you don't have to be in public assistance. Uh, there are so many people now because of our economic conditions yeah. that are just barely um, making ends meet even though both parents are working and um, and it's hard for those folks to ask for help because they're not used to it so don't be embarrassed there's our numbers are growing each year and it, this is the reason um, because of, of the economic uh, fallout of all of the past uh, recent years that you are aware of I'm sure um, so we are here to help all of us are hundred percent volunteer we have a great team within the Marine Corps League a lot of the uh, Marines wives are on my bagging team they bag mm -hmm. the toys we start bagging toys November 8th so you guys who want to donate I, I want you to encourage you to think about donating early and watch the stores for the sales. Yeah, because they'll start way before the Christmas season. I have one lady, and I want to brag on her. Now, there's many, many, many I could brag on, but this lady she has actually developed problems with uh, walking even, and she has a farm on uh, Sand Mountain, but she lives in Georgia, but her brother lives out here on the mountain, so she comes every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, helps out with the farm. She's also taking care of her 104-year-old father, and she takes the time to shop the sales. This woman knows how to shop sales better than I do. We need to go hang out with her. And trust me, she drives her pickup truck, and she calls me, and every month she brings a pickup load full of, and she will call me first and say, what's, what do I need to buy? What's on your shopping list? What do you need most? Mm -hmm. And that's what she goes shopping for. And so far she has uh, delivered uh, once per month, last month and this month. I've made her at our bo a building where we do the sorting. And by the way, thank you to the City of Fort Payne for providing mm -hmm. free use of that building. That is uh, truth. Truth. We could not have a campaign without a building. <laughs> uh, and also to Randy Wilson because uh, of realty and storage because he provides us a separate building for the big items like bicycles that would take up so much room mm -hmm. that we, w we wouldn't have enough space uh, mm -hmm. where we're bagging toys. So thank you, Randy, for that um, and the city of Fort Payne. And even the city, uh, for the first time last year, this past Christmas, the city employees actually uh, did a toy drive within, you know, in-house toy mm -hmm. drive. That's the first time they've done that. So mm -hmm. thank you to the, to the employees and, who, and they contacted us 
there's just so many I don't want to leave anyone out but uh, those are ones that just you know pop into my mind but this particular lady has been bringing over these toys and dropping them off like when we have setups at Walmart thank you Walmart for letting us set up mm -hmm. out front and accept toys and monetary donations and also big lots and also Bruce's those are the three mm -hmm. main ones Bruce's in Rainsville and Fort Payne did, uh, allow us to do that big lots has always allowed us to do that except for one or couple, two years uh, they backed another charity and we couldn't, but now they're they have uh, they're uh, back on board with the Marine Choice for Tots Foundation, and they are uh, now a national sponsor. So uh, the employees there were, were about ready to cry when they found out they couldn't <laughs> help us, but they're very happy now to be able to help us again. So thank you to those businesses for those things, mm -hmm. and almost any of those that we go to make a major to a toy purchase with of uh, toys that were not donated um, almost always they will give us a, a bulk discount um, because it is toys for tots. Maru we're going to have to go into a commercial break and we'll be right back in just a minute. Time flies. <laughs> we'll be right back. At La Mon's Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to LaMonsMex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Let Rhonda at Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC take the burden off you for all your tax needs. I know because Rhonda has been taking care of my business since 2013. I feel Rhonda works for me because she knows the direct questions to ask to better benefit my unique business in order for me to get back the biggest refund possible. Rhonda is an ongoing student and she knows tax laws are in a constant change every year. Call 256-281-9903 for an appointment to take the dread out of getting your taxes done. Rhonda is located at 11968 U.S. Highway 431 in Boaz. Again, that number is 256-281-9903. And let Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC champion your personal and business taxes. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need, toys at Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blunt Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. 
and thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Are you ready? We all wonder what tomorrow will bring, but the future lays itself at the feet of the prepared and surrenders to the will of the persistent. It's not easy, but today shapes you so you can shape tomorrow. With Northeast Alabama Community College, when the future asks if you're ready, you can answer. Yes. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community College. Good afternoon. We are back. My name is Donna, and I am your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications. That's in North Alabama. Then you can also find us worldwide, basically. We're syndicated on Abundant Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon hey. Fire. And that's a fantastic. I love Roku, Apple TV. I've had someone ask me this week. You're on television? Yes, we're on television. You can find us. You can also find us on a podcast, and that's netsnewsnetwork.net. And like I told you before, if you get your feelings hurt, you don't want to watch that station. <laughs> I'm watching. Maybe I just don't have enough sense to know when my feelings are being hurt. But anyway, we're all for the truth, and that's what it's all about. LaRue Hardinger is with us, and she is with the Marine Toys for Tots, and been knowing you a long time. I feel like I've known you my entire life. A bunch. Well, hey, yeah. <laughs> so, I do. This, it has been there a long time. There are certain people you guys can relate that you've met maybe a decade or two decades ago, but you feel like you've known them since you were born. I mean, you just mm -hmm. automatically yeah. connect, and she's that type of person, at least to me. And <laughs> I don't want to get too much here, but <laughs> and sometimes we can like we're both busy with our careers. Mm -hmm. but we're both like super busy. You're, and it. By the way, Toys for Tot is it's not just Christmas when you're where you're working all through the year. Yes. And sometimes projects will take hold maybe in springtime, and then you have to get you know things okay. done. Okay. I'll with give that. one example. This weekend, and I'm getting I'm giving Ollie's a plug in Scottsboro. Mm -hmm. Wait now, just because we serve in DeKalb County and we can only solicit donations in DeKalb County, we can purchase anywhere we want to. Mm -hmm. And Ollie's in Scottsboro. Uh, I personally get that coupon in my email mm -hmm. that with one with one entire purchase, you can get twenty percent off or or t yeah twenty percent off or fifteen percent off mm -hmm. uh, entire purchase. Mm -hmm. So. I watch the sale papers, and if it coincides with my coupon, and it's got the toys I need, then I, that our shelves are bare, mm -hmm. and I know they're way too expensive without the coupon, mm -hmm. I will go. That's what I did Sunday night, and <laughs> <laughs> they had so many items that we needed that we were totally out of. Mm -hmm. I want you to know store manager Billy Mann and uh, his, the one uh, cashier who was left, and I apologize, sweetie, I, I, her last name, I can't remember her name now, but she worked just as hard as I did, and he did too. They actually went behind me with those big U-shaped uh, carts, and we filled up four of those and just probably a dozen regular carts of mm -hmm. items that we needed terribly and that would have been over our price cap which is $35 a toy and they worked with us um, well actually it was me because my it was Sunday and most of the time I don't ask my, my volunteers to work on Sunday and but normally they would have I would have had some people uh, of, of our group to help us but I just want you to know what kind of folks they are and how they want to help Toys for Tots. And um, so basically, I ended up paying uh, out of money that you guys have donated. Uh, and I manage it so well, I make sure I have what I call seed money <laughs> <laughs> left, you know, so I can shop early in the year. Or, or all through the year, uh -huh. the next campaign, we're not rich by any, and we don't have just money, you know, every, we don't have that much money, but the money we do have, if I come across a sale like that, I am not going to let it get away, so ended up spending $6,000 for approximately, 
I would say double that amount of toys mm -hmm. because they were already marked down. Mm -hmm. They they did a big buyout. Yeah, they always, mm -hmm. You know, they did a deep, a big mm -hmm. buyout. I don't know if I can say the name of another very popular, very big department store. I will say that. I can say that years ago they bought out Toys R Us. Mm -hmm. And this was another buyout of another store that's just about as big as that one, if not bigger. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew. So they're good quality toys. Oh, oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. They're worth much more than what Ollie's mm -hmm. normally sells them for. Mm -hmm. You know. So they were already marked down. And um, my strategy is, okay, I'm giving away one of my secrets, but my strategy is if I buy everything you've got of this item on this aisle, how much more of a discount can you give me? <laughs> Can you kind of, that's yeah. a businesswoman well, for you. Okay. And she is, is handling the money you give in the, the way I would want you to handle But it. if they don't give me the discount, I don't buy it. Or if they don't, I mean, I know how to walk mm -hmm. away. And that's mm -hmm. one of the, my strategies, too. Walk away. And they'll <laughs> he say, who, wait, they'll he say, who speaks first loses. <laughs> and they'll say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can, we can work out something. <laughs> That wasn't Billy, though. Billy's always no, anxious no, no, to help no. us. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, he was just so you No, know, Billy's wonderful. You know, Bobby Ledbetter, Twin City Used Car Sales, was was feeding folks. You know, he let us use that parking lot out there, too, numerous times. I know. He's wonderful. And he's also going to support us again this year, mm -hmm. even though all of the troubles he's had the last couple <laughs> of years, you know, with having to relocate. Yeah. But I talked with him, and he said, we're going to help you in the same ways that we've always helped you this year. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the kind of guy he I is. I couldn't tell you, and I didn't know whether I needed to mention it or not, so I talked to him earlier. And so we were getting, we needed to buy another vehicle. <laughs> and so I thought, well, he's not going to go back in business. So several months ago, I got in contact with Bobby. He and is. I said, Bobby, please, please, we got to have another vehicle. <laughs> I said, so you're not in the car business anymore. Who should we buy from? Because I only want to buy from him. You know, and it just broke my heart. And then he said, Miss Donna, he always calls me Miss Donna. <laughs> don't he don't do me anything yet. Don't do anything yet. And I went, but we're driving each other crazy. We have like one vehicle right now. Right now. Save our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> help us, help us. And uh, he said, Trust me, Miss Donna, don't buy anything yet. And I'm like, can't you tell me? What are you talking He's about? He's not telling us where it's located, but he has told me, and sorry, to, I'm sorry, sorry, Bobby, if I'm going too far with this, but he, he wanted to assure me we still had the use of the wrapped trailer for Toys for Tots, and they were going to do everything they've done, including the when we set up at the fairgrounds in October. That's we huge. can't give out food, but buddy, he can. Mm -hmm. And he sets up his trailer that's wrapped for Toys for Tots right beside of our canopy while we're giving out crayons uh -huh. and coloring books. Uh-huh. He's giving out candy. Yeah. <laughs> you know how Bobby is. He really cares for the community. I have never seen any, a businessman like that. And he lets nothing stop him. Uh -huh. If he if he gets uh, if he if he runs up against uh, an obstacle like he has this past year, he finds a way. <laughs> I, I knew he would. I, I just knew he would. There was just yeah. that confidence about he him. He has let me know that he's going to be okay and that you know I'm not quitting now. Yeah, we're going to find a way. So mm -hmm. you guys who want to buy from him, uh, he's still got cars for sale. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> just hold on. He's, he's going to even be now. Back. You know, I, I'm sure if you contact him, he'll you know you mm -hmm. can find a car. <laughs> Uh, but anyways less than a minute okay um, I don't know if, unless somebody has sent in a question really what I, else I can throw in there but I, the, what I was talking about to get back on track was was Ollie's we filled up my pickup truck which is an extended bed uh -huh. and it was piled up and it looked like okay you know uh, the Grinch <laughs> <laughs> when he's going down the, when he's going down the hill <laughs> he's got all the tw uh -huh. towns toys that's the way my pickup looked. And we had a stretchy net over it. Oh my goodness. I can't believe no, you made it up the mountain. We looked like down down the mountain. Down the mountain. <laughs> uh, up and down, down the mountain. Because <laughs> you're going from one mountain to another. And we did. And I was going 45 miles per hour. And I was looking for cops. I wish I could have been there. And, but listen, that wouldn't hold it all. And they were all in bags. And it was you know had been raining. Uh -huh. But God smiled on us mm -hmm. and the rain blew over just in time for us to leave but uh he crammed his suv full. <laughs> that's the barking dog telling us that we're done and <laughs> we're going to take this up though you're going to be right back anyway when you see billy 
tell him thank you for helping Toys for Tots. <laughs> and, and go shop with him, okay? Lots of shop great deals, him. great prices, great everything, okay? Yeah. Thank you for watching The Edge. My name is Donna, and I'm your host. You can find us on television, channel 182, on Charter Communications and Abundant Television, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. <laughs> I can see what you're doing, LaRue. I know. <laughs> and you can also check out the podcast, yeah, Net we're, News we're Network. Still, we're still no, little girls yeah. at heart. We like to cut out. Well, yeah, I don't think we're around <laughs> each other. I see her at meetings, and she's just... No, I'm but not. Yes, you are. And then when we get together, it's like we're little girls all over again. <laughs> thank you for watching, and thank you, LaRue. everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications. That's all over North Alabama. You can also find us on Abundance Television, which is syndicated. That's Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. And I'm going to tell you what, I love this podcast, netnewsnetwork.net. Thanks to this couple right here. So we're on Net News Network. Chuck and Mary Lynn Bailey, who are with Alabama Fair Tax, uh, are with us right now. Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Hey, Donna. Hey, Donna. Doing well. Looks like we're getting some sun over here. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what to think. Yeah, we're getting sun, too. But but I'm kind of praying now for rain. I can't be pleased. I either you know want it to rain or not rain. So anyways, we've been watering the garden a lot. Right. And uh, so we got a big, big rain over the weekend. So that, that really helped out yeah. as well. So what's going on in the world of fair tax right now? Well, we've got uh, a couple of things going on. We just had uh, the the national guys were in North Carolina for the uh, um, for Trump's rally up there and the, the, the Republican convention that they're having, uh, they had this last weekend. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting on reports of that back. But uh, they were able to talk to several people uh, movers and shakers and uh, we'd like to see something come out of that to where people start finally realizing there's more and more that something's got to be done and the fair tax is the way mm -hmm. to do it and also for the state for the state bill we've got a uh, a uh, zoom call lined up for thursday and we've got the the writer of the bill that uh is from the heritage foundation and we've got the AFFT uh, president and uh, CEO is going to be on the, on the call with me. And then uh, we've got a, uh, a representative, chief of staff, and several other legislators that are interested in uh, in this tax bill. So when we, when we step off from that, hopefully we'll have a, a task force started to, to where they'll actually start looking and at what at the uh, – rate study that we did in the bill and saying, yeah, it looks like this could be done. Now they went and, you know, they went, went and did that grocery tax thing. And I saw, saw our Senator yesterday and I said, grocery tax relief, bah. <laughs> because, you know, they took, oh, a penny, they, they took a penny off and, and were searching around for what they were going to replace that penny with. Uh -huh. So, <clears throat> that, that's no way to do it. You need to do it like the fair tax, the Alabama Economic Freedom Act, by getting rid of the whole mess and only tax you on the consumption of, of food. And then only after you've paid for, paid for your family and everything by getting the prebate. And actually, so, it's, it's less than what the, what the current sales tax is yeah. in most places. Now, we haven't gotten everybody's results, but for, uh, for Huntsville, the, uh, the cost, the tax would be... 7%, approximately, a little less than 7% on all new goods and services. Total, total that'd be a state and it would be 6.65 or something like that. Yeah, and that's, and that's for the all the sales taxes 
and uh, that's city and county sales taxes in the state. But aha, uh -huh. it replaces everything other than just mm -hmm. you buying that uh, that product or service and paying that consumption tax. Plus, you get the prebate, which means you're untaxed up to the poverty level. So it really mm -hmm. is a much much better deal. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the and <clears throat> so I, you know, we hope that people will will, re will realize that and ask for it because. Mm -hmm. Tinkering around with the tax code just makes a bigger book of tax codes, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't solve any problems. It just creates more. I, I think it does, and not only that, but it gives your career politicians more ways to put their hands in that money. You know, because you know that uh, uh, they had two things that happened: uh, Senator Gavan and uh, Minority Leader uh, Daniels got together, and they came up with a uh, removal of uh, tax on overtime for the next two years up to $2,000. Hmm. And so that's, that's another, they, they, it's just a picking, you know, they pick the, the people that are going to do overtime and they're not going to pay any tax on that money, but it's going to go away in, in two years. Whereas if you do the fair tax, they won't ever, to, ever have to worry about paying income tax mm -hmm. on overtime because there won't be any. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's all, all those kinds of things that they're doing that I'm that I'm watching now, and it just drives me crazy to see them do that. Rather than it's look like they're, at is, are they dancing around it? I mean, they know they've got to know this is the best way to go. <clears throat> but are they kind of dancing around it just to shut people like me up? I, I don't just know not going to shut me up. Yeah, I don't know that that's necessarily the case. I I do give them some <clears throat> leeway there because uh, first of all, they have a lot of things on their plate, not just the tax code. That's a big part of it. But they've also got people coming to them and saying, well, you know, the, we've got these people who are suffering because they, this of this tax. We need to relieve that. So write a, write a, you know, port, something into the tax code that will relieve these people. But then, in, but then you have to increase the tax on somebody else or find another way to raise that tax. Whereas with the fair tax, it's just everybody pays the same rate and nobody pays taxes up to the poverty level. It's very it's a, it's transparent, which I think is one problem for the uh, for the politicians because they they do like to find ways to raise taxes that people can't see and uh, and appear to be giving you know giving benefits to someone else. And then there are those that like to use it for behavior control too. Yeah, but again, there there are a lot of good people. There are a lot of bad people. <laughs> that are representing yeah. us and we really really have to have to be aware you have to you have to get to know your politicians and they when they come to your area just take the time to go and talk to them and find out and don't and do your own research because mm -hmm. I mean, you can you don't even have to believe what we're saying about the fair tax just look at look at it we've got the sure. bill uh we've got you know we explain how it works the real the real the real underlying thing is uh they have to take a risk to vote this bill in, and most of them are risk averse. Mm -hmm. And they're and so afraid that's, of that's the I think that's the overarching thing. And then, you know, they're sitting there thinking, "Boy, if we pass this, and it doesn't collect every penny we say it's going to collect, and this guy has to pay a little more than that guy, they're going to come after me and say, ah, we got this system. We know what it's like. We know what it's doing. Mm -hmm. We know how it's terrible.'" <laughs> well, we're going to stick with it. Anyway. There are people. They're not just people. There are, are parts of our of our state that um, get deductions and exemptions and um, and those are they hang on to those with a you know, they're very fierce about their exemptions and deductions well the, th the fact of the matter is they'll be better off under the fair tax people will have more money now these are for businesses mm -hmm. People will have more money and be able to buy more from these businesses they won't need to have those exemptions and deductions, but it's a scary thing. They'll, they'll have the deductions that they're getting. They'll have those without ever having to any, pay any tax on because those deductions are just the tax money off of that that you get back. That's not mm -hmm. the deduction. At the yeah, federal level, here's another thing though: time <laughs> is money. Time is money. So mm -hmm. you're spending less time. I know because I, I own a very small business here, but you're spending so much time jumping through hurdles and you know, oh, let's make sure I get this right because I'm a conservative and I know I'm going to be picked on. Mm -hmm. So. So I just, you know, I spend so much time dodging bullets that you know, I could be spending on increasing my business. Uh, several years back, the, the IRS 
put this information out. And I, I think they occasionally still do. But the year that they put it out, they figured that uh, 7.9 billion hours had been spent doing national uh, income tax uh, forms. Mm -hmm. that, that's just, and if you take that and just multiply it times a, a nominal 40 hour week, you know, you're talking about 400, 500 billion dollars spent just to fill out a stinking form that has no oh. value added whatsoever. And just think about the environment. <laughs> <laughs> All that yeah, if you're a tree hugger, think about yeah. the environment. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Because there, I, I, I read somewhere that the, uh, I think it was uh, Chevrolet. In when they file taxes, they have fifty-seven feet of paperwork <laughs> that goes to the IRS, and <clears throat> I, I, the IRS is a weapon to be used against us, and it's been used and is being, being used. used right and, now. Yeah, and and that's something um, I don't I don't like a, an overarching federal government that that can come in and run your life. Yeah, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the information that that they ask for every time, every year, you have to give information to the federal government. When you with the fair tax, you when you pay your tax, there, there's no question about what's your what's your social security number, how much money do you make, and so on. It's all you pay your tax and it's gone. And the the fair tax does not ask for your income, only your family mm -hmm. size, and and it asks that only if you uh, accept the rebate. The previous, well, let me ask you a question. I want to get this clear. So, in other words, we, we don't do that anymore. Um, basically, what I do is I, I fill out a sheet of paper, even if it goes to two sheets of paper. I, I fill that out. I'm done. Next, it's time to go ahead and increase my business. That's correct. Yes. Yes. All that. uh -huh. That's right. And it's just based on what, what your sales are, mm -hmm. nothing else. Yeah. And for, for uh, businesses that have inventory, <clears throat> they take inventory anyway. So, that's, and they'll say, well, we had so much in inventory this month. And we sold X number of widgets or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, it and we had had to refund X number of widgets. So it's it's really a, a, a one page form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's uh, the further it's it's based on a single uh, set of books. You know, mm -hmm. your books are the books that they use to uh, determine uh, mm -hmm. what your tax liability really is. Now. Um, any any business that's uh, operating in the state of Alabama will have to be uh, have a, you know have to have a business license, mm -hmm. and that business license uh, connects them with the state taxing authority. Then, just like they are now with the sales tax, and they're liable for audits. And mm -hmm. and uh, what that's going to do is it's going to give you uh, a, a lot fewer audits to be done, and uh, and it'll be more uh, enforceable because. Right now, we've got something like 2.3 uh, million folks that have tax-paying jobs in um, in the state of Alabama, mm -hmm. and that'll go down to about 60 to 70 uh, thousand retailers. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that'll be a lot more easy to enforce than uh, than the way it goes now? And, and under the under the Air Alabama Economic Freedom Act, mm -hmm. it takes two to cheat. Whereas under the income tax system, it only takes one because I can go off in a corner and fill out a form and send it in. Mm -hmm. It's between me and, uh, and the guy that checked the form, whether I get an audit or not. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this, if I don't pay that tax, I've got to beg the guy that's selling me the, the product or service to not tax me. And that guy won't be in business very long if he, if he uh, doesn't uh, tax the guy because the tax is going to come out, have to come out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. and a business won't last very long if they're paying the tax. Mm -hmm. they sell. That's right. Guys, we have to go into a commercial break and we have some questions that have been sent in. By the oh, way, if you have any questions and, and you're not going to win now unless you send a question in. So I've had a lot of folks who have sent messages. Got to have a question. Send yeah. your message to Donna at Donna's edge.com. And when we come back, we have some questions. We're going to go over those and um, with two winners. Absolutely. Okay. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Everybody hang in there.
at La Mugs Mexican Restaurant located in Henniger, Alabama and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to limonesmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Let Rhonda at Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC take the burden off you for all your tax needs. I know because Rhonda has been taking care of my business since 2013. I feel Rhonda works for me because she knows the direct questions to ask to better benefit my unique business in order for me to get back the biggest refund possible. Rhonda is an ongoing student and she knows tax laws are in a constant change every year. Call 256-281-9903 for an appointment to take the dread out of getting your taxes done. Rhonda is located at 11968 U.S. Highway 431 in Boaz. Again, that number is 256-281-9903. And let Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC champion your personal and business taxes. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need, towards a Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blount Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018.
The only place I buy my beef is Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama. Their cattle is born and raised on their ranch, grass and grain fed, and you can feel confident when you serve your family and friends because their beef is all natural and no antibiotics or hormones are added. You can buy whole beef or perhaps go in with family or friends and buy half. Their customer service is number one as they take care of the delivery to their local processor and can deliver to your home for a small added fee. They also offer herd replacement heifers. I always call Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama for my beef specialty recipes and cookouts, and you can too. Food shortages are increasing, so buy local by calling 256-523-6462. That's 256-523-6462. Good afternoon, my name is Sana Fizel. I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundance Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. And don't forget the podcast, netsnewsnetwork.net. I have two of your favorite guests with me right now, Chuck and Mary Lynn Bailey, who are with Fair Tax, uh, the Alabama Fair Tax. Um, so good to always be with you guys. And we've had some questions sent in, and we have two winners who win the book. And let's talk about the book. What do you win? What do you win if if you're chosen? Well, well you win the you win the book. This red, nice red book here. And uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's yeah. the uh, fair tax uh, where they answer the critics. Mm-hmm. This is the second book, and what it does is it uh, it. It re- recovers, it re- regurgitates what's in the first book to a degree. And then it goes into all the, well, you can't do it because of this. It's not going to work because of that. it goes into all of those and, uh, and says, here's the answer to your question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, just to, I, I repeat this every, every time we talk about it, but it, it's a, it's a soft cover book. That's the only way it was printed. And it's no longer in print. Uh, we we buy all of the used ones that we can find, and those are the ones we're sending out. So you will not be getting a new book, but it will be a readable book, and it'll be something we hope you'll pass on. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you need to pass it on to all of your friends out there as well. Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay, so we have a winner, um, Jack, um, I'm sorry, Sheree Fox. Um, Sheree, F-O-X-X is her last name. I like that mm-hmm. name, Sheree Fox. It just sounds kind of cool. So she sends a question in and she said she's a business owner. Mm-hmm. So she's trying to understand why she would actually have more time to run her business if this takes place. If the uh, uh, <coughs> if the Alabama bill, is she, is she from Alabama? Mm-hmm. The, the Alabama bill would, would relieve her of all income taxes on her uh, uh, for the state, the state income taxes on her employees, everything. She would have not. She would not have to keep books on that except uh, her normal books on her employees, uh, because I guess I guess Medicaid and everything is taken. No, you're talking about federal now. No, I'm talking about state. I'm talking about state first, okay. then I'll talk about okay. federal. Okay. The the federal the the state uh, equivalent would be Medicaid, so the the state government would have to know if a person is eligible for that so they from that point of view they would have the the business would have to report to the state that this person mm-hmm. was an employee and they they're in good standing and all that mm-hmm. and at the federal level the uh the social security and medicare are, are part of the rate that you pay for all these consumptions uh, uh for mm-hmm. the consumption tax so that's about 35 percent of what the uh the rate is and the person that's uh, in business as far as the federal taxes are concerned would not have to worry about that either. They would have to report that like now that I think what does you have that they have 40 good quarters and that sort of thing. They have to report that sort of thing and, and that they're el- eligible to re- receive it. Mm-hmm. And uh, from that point on, uh, they would just collect taxes, fill out a form saying I sold so much this month. Here's the tax on it. But by the way, I'm keeping a quarter percent of that for my troubles here to collect the tax. Well, the other thing that the business owner has to do is they collect the tax that is right. on, on everything they sell. So if you have a widget that costs 78 cents, the total cost would be a dollar. And it'd be 78, right? 77. 77 cents. The total cost would be a dollar. And now this is at the federal level. And um, 
So you would you would charge a dollar for that for that the, item and the, the it, price the price on yourself would be a dollar. Right. Mm -hmm. so whenever someone buys something, they would pay a dollar. You would take twenty three cents of that and put it away for the federal government, and, and that's um, it, a business. Business owners keep inventory, so that all they mm -hmm. would have to do is say, yeah. "We sold so much inventory this this month." Um, and we had so many refunds that we had to give because they were, things were brought back mm -hmm. or whatever. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then so they would just, they would give the, the government that, that amount of money mm -hmm. at the state level, uh, the taxes, it would be the same way the yeah. the tax would be included in the item. And, um, there's no, there's no adding tax when you go to the, to the register, whatever's on the price of the product. You know, there's there's a tax in there, and then and it's all part of the price. Right, and the form that, the, that a business owner would fill out is just a one-page form just saying, you know, I collected so much this month. Uh, we had so many refunds, et cetera, as I just said. So, And that would be the tax that, that would be paid, and that would be it. It would There wouldn't be – I don't – if you have a tax accountant or if you have an accountant, they would be in, helping you grow your business, not – um, there's no, there's no double, special, there's no special. I got to keep this data for the Fed. I got to keep right. this data for the state. Mm -hmm. and I got to keep this data for me. And it's all, it, you got an inventory there. You got an accounting system. You use that system to determine what the tax mm -hmm. is and pay the tax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And and then again, that's all you're going to be paying is that percentage of tax. And that's only retailers. No one else collects tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, so if I own a, let's just say I, um, a massage therapist and, and so I, or I do nails or whatever, but whatever I, or I'm an attorney, you know, where it's a service right. instead of a retail business, you're not paying that, are you? Yeah. What, what happens is, um, there, there are no taxes paid on anything that you can prove is used for your business. In other words, you buy the nail polish and all that stuff. That's, that's your business. That's part of the inventory. That's, that's part of the cost of doing business. And so mm -hmm. when you when you put the paint on the nails and, and give the, the mm -hmm. person the check or a receipt, they pay you the tax on the value of what you're doing rather than piece parts of everything you bought. Mm -hmm. So that's a good you know, explanation. You're gonna you're gonna the, the tax money is gonna be there, but uh uh, it's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to take two arms and a leg to uh, to do your tax forms every every month or whatever to get that tax turned in. Mm -hmm. It'll be I sold so much of my product or service. I pay the. I determine what the the ta the tax is for that amount. I keep a quarter percent, and that's state and federal, by the way, the quarter percent. And then I hand the rest over to the state and say thank you very much. Come and. Come and talk to me if you need to, and that's just retailers. Everybody else, if I'm if I'm a paint company, I've got to have different kinds of things to make up that paint. I got to have pigment, and I got to have solvent, and all that stuff. None of that stuff's taxed because it doesn't get taxed until it reaches the the person that's paying for it to, for their personal use. Right, and as far as um, a paint company, for instance, if they are selling the paint from their store then they would collect the tax. If they're selling the paint to like Lowe's or Home Depot, there would be no tax on that because the tax would be collected at retail. Mm -hmm. So there is no, there's, and, and that goes the, for, for the, lawyers. The, paint, the painter wouldn't pay a tax either because that's part of him doing business. His service is going to be the, once he collects the money from you, the tax mm -hmm. is going to be collected there. Mm -hmm. And it's going um, to be the same amount of tax overall. We had another question sent in. And this is a real good one right here. Now, I'll not say whether it's a he or she, <laughs> and they and they also don't want their name mentioned because no. it's not in the business. So they said that they have a retail establishment, and they do sell some things new, some things used. Mm -hmm. So and then they also take new and used things to trade day, and sell them. So how would they go about? It's only new items, right? So they would no. only. They would only report the things that were sold new, right? That's exactly. right. You collect the tax on new items. Used no, that, items that, I, think in, I think in that case, they would have to be especially particular about, yep, 
this is new and this is used because that's going to be part of the audit if they get audited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now I would think they'd need to keep a good record on what was used and what was new. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that they don't keep that record right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I'm, just saying, yeah. I'm just saying that's uh, yeah. that's the deal. They'd have to keep a good good set of books on that. Yeah, but anything new has not been taxed yet so that you would collect the tax for that item. But anything that has mm -hmm. already been sold has been taxed mm -hmm. already. It's, it's not taxed again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Guys, we got to call it today. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's already gone. Thank you guys for being on the show. And thank you so much for watching The Edge on IEC Radio, source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundance Television, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget, send a question in. And that's uh, to the email address you see right there, Donna at Donna's edge.com. Donna at Donna's edge.com. Thanks guys. Thanks Donna. Cheerio. <laughs>Thank you.
often became exposed to music as a child. 68% rated their ability to learn new things as excellent or very good compared to 50% of those who were not ex exposed to music. I was exposed to music my entire life. Grandparents who sang in church and all those great things. And so music has just always been a, a huge part. Now, the next point was active musical engagement, including those over age 50, was associated with higher rates of happiness and good cognitive function. Then the last one he gives is adults with no early music exposure, but who currently engage in some music appreciation show above average mental well-being scores. So let's take a look at this study. So those are pretty impressive results to be sure. However, this 20-minute online survey has some limitations. So I'm going to take a survey and you're going to be with me. For one, it included 3,185 U.S. adults ages 18 and older. That's a small number um, if you're kind of comparing that to 328 million people across the country. For another, it's really a survey of people's opinions. For example, although people might report their brain health is excellent, there was no objective measure of brain health, such as MIR, MRI scan, or even a test to measure their cognition. Lastly, even if the ratings were true, the findings are only correlations. They do not prove that, for example, it was the exposure to music as a child that led one's improved ability to learn new things. It may be equally likely that those children brought up in more affluent households were both, both more likely to be exposed to music and to be given a good education that led their being able to learn easily learn new things came later in life, but let's assume that the results of the AARP survey are indeed true. How can music have such an impressive brain effect? Okay, although we don't know the answers for sure, according to the author, developments in cognitive neuroscience over the past few years have allowed us to speculate on some possible mechanisms. Okay, so let's really get to this one. I, I really, I, I just love music. Um, I, I play piano. I play piano by ear, which means I'm self-taught. It's just always been a thing for me. Okay, music activates just about all of the brain. So music has been shown to activate some of the broadest and most diverse networks of the brain. Of course, music activates the auditory cortex in the temporal lobes close to your ears, but that's just the beginning. So the parts of the brain involved in emotion are not only activated during emotional music, they're also synchronized. So music also act activates a variety of memory regions. And very interesting here, music activates the motor system. In fact, it's been theorized that it is the activation to the brain's motor system that allows us to pick the beat of the music even before we stop, start tapping our foot to it. And this is pretty interesting too. I know that, um, and, and I don't know why, I would like to study this as well. So I can be listening, so I'm sitting in church, and I'm listening to a church, to a song I have never heard before in my entire life. I happen to know what that next beat's going to be. I happen to know what the next beat, next note is going to be in the song as well. I can almost, I can... I'm talking within a hair. I can figure out when the song is going to end, and I can figure out the beat to the end of it. I can figure out all I need is the beat. If I got the beat going to the song, I can get right to it. And I can just about, that's why people like, groups like people who play piano by ear, because you kind of get that perception on when it's going to end, what comes next, when it's going to be the chorus, when it's going to be the next verse, that kind of thing. So let's talk about this. It says, use it or lose it. Now what does that mean? Okay, so music activates just about all of the brain, according to this article. So why is it so important? Well, have you ever heard the expression, if you don't use it, you'll lose it? Turns out this is actually true in the brain. So brain pathways and even whole networks are strengthened when they are used and are weakened when they're not used. The reason is that the brain is efficient. It isn't going to bother keeping a brain pathway strong when it hasn't been used in many years. The brain will use the neutrons, neurons in that pathway for something else. These types of changes should be intuitively 
obvious to you. That's why it's harder to speak a foreign language if you haven't used it in 20 years. Many of the old pathways have degraded and the neurons are being used for other purposes. So it's that simple. Okay, so music keeps your brain networks strong. Let's talk about that. So just how does music promote well-being, enhance learning, stimulate cognitive function, improve qualities of life, and even induce happiness? The answer is because music can activate almost all brain regions and networks. It can also help to keep a myriad of brain pathway and network strong, including those networks that are involved in well-being, learning, cognitive function, quality of life, and happiness. In fact, there's only one other situation in which you can activate so many brain networks all at once that it's when you participate in social activities. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, now let's talk about dancing the night away. Dance the night away. That's a, you know, it's a song from the 70s. How do you incorporate music into your life? It's easy to do. Although the AARP survey found that those who actively listened to music showed the strongest brain benefits, um, even those who primarily listened to background music showed benefits. So you can turn that music on right now. I say let's go play some music. Music can lift your mood, so put on a happy tune if you're feeling blue. Up tempo music can help you uh, can help give you some energy. I've, I've noticed that. Like when the, and, and think about this when you get up really early in the morning. I had Phil change the alarm clock. Not that we ever need it really, but the alarm clock, it, it, like the old timey alarm clocks where they had this. I mean, it's just like ooh, like you know, wake up to something weird going on. You know, I mean, you start off your day kind of weird. So we have our alarm clock going off, um, and this is Phil's cell phone, so we have ours go off to this calming kind of get up and get it going music. It's not like really outlandish, but it's enough that it'll get you up and it'll get you moving, and it'll get you motivated, and it'll keep you going. So let's talk about this just for a second, and then we're going to go into something else when we come back from the break. So, music can lift your mood, so put on a happy tune if you're feeling blue. Up-tempo music to give you energy, and if you combine music with an aerobic and social activity, you can receive the maximum health benefits from it. So, you can do something like participate in Zumba. A lot of people do that. Do jazz aerobics. Jump to the rhythms of rock and roll. That's what I do. Or better yet, just go dancing. And yes, in the pandemic, or anything else that happens in this world, you can benefit by doing these activities virtually. A lot of Zoom meetings and things like that are out there now. Go on YouTube.com and you'll be able to find all kinds of wonderful, wonderful things. So whatever your music is, I like the old rock from the 1970s. That that really does something for me. So And I also like the, the old music, ballroom dancing type stuff from the 1940s, even though I wasn't born yet. I still love that stuff. Anything that, because it really depends on your mood as to what kind of music you listen to. So if I'm in kind of a mellow mood, I had a lady that I know um, went to a church um, we used to go to, and I played piano there. And she said, after church, she told Phil, I could always tell what kind of mood she's in. It depends on the, the, the type, tempo of the song she's playing while people are walking into the church. And I guess that's kind of true. So if I'm like in this, I'm feeling free kind of a mood, then I'm going to pick something just a little bit soothing, that kind of thing. Or if I'm in a hurry about something, I'm driving down the road, I kind of hate to play fast music because it makes me speed. So I try not to do that. But if I need to be mellowed out, I just like classical guitar. I just think classical guitar is just awesome. If I want to get moving, I want to get dancing, I want to just get some stuff done, I want to get energized, well, this is going to be the rock stuff from the 1970s. That's the kind of stuff I like to listen to. Let's cut into a commercial break. We're going to be right back in just a minute, so you hang in there. and Let's get in a good mood with some good music. The Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. 
At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience Southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018. Are you ready? We all wonder what tomorrow will bring, but the future lays itself at the feet of the prepared and surrenders to the will of the persistent. It's not easy, but today shapes you so you can shape tomorrow. With Northeast Alabama Community College, when the future asks if you're ready, you can answer. Yes. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community College. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back, the my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, my pillow 2.0. The best sleep just got even better. Whether you have a my pillow or not, you need to get the brand new my pillow 2.0. Call or go to mypillow.com now. Use your promo code, and for a limited time, when you buy one, you'll get a second one absolutely free. The only place I buy my beef is Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama. Their cattle is born and raised on their ranch, grass and grain fed, and you can feel confident when you serve your family and friends because their beef is all natural and no antibiotics or hormones are added. You can buy whole beef or perhaps go in with family or friends and buy half. Their customer service is number one as they take care of the delivery to their local processor and can deliver to your home for a small added fee. They also offer herd replacement heifers. I always call Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama for my beef specialty recipes and cookouts, and you can too. Food shortages are increasing, so buy local by calling 256-523-6462. That's 256-523-6462. Lamones Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to lamonesmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need, towards a Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blunt Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Donna, and I am your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundant Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. We're talking about music, 
Can music change your mood? Can music put you in a happy, happy tone? Or if, you, if you've got a lot of stuff you want to get done, you want to put on some rock music so you can kind of rock and get, get your gardening done or, you know, just whatever you need to get done. You can do it with music, most definitely. It's also been found brain function can actually increase with music and with activities. So this is another article from the same author. His name is Andrew E. Hudson, MD. I'm sorry, I got the name wrong. It's Andrew E. Budson, MD. And so he's talked about, and not sure what happened here. Let me get back. I'm talking about, let's move this. There we go. Okay, so he's um, talking about brain function, okay, and how music ties into that. Now he's talking about um, want a sharp mind, strong memory, just wrap up your activities. And it's really true. The more busy you are, the absolute better it is. So um, if we want to keep our minds sharp, which we do, we're all in, I'm getting into the age 60. I'm a baby boomer right here. And I'll be um, 64 on my birthday. So if we want to keep our minds sharp and our memories strong as we get older, so what we can do right now is prevent cognitive decline. What can we do to prevent cognitive decline in our latter years? So engaging in regular aerobic exercise for at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week, probably has the biggest effect on people of all ages. You youngsters out there too. Okay, so let's, let's go on ahead and let's set a network where we're going to do this, okay? So convincing evidence also that on hope. So convincing evidence also suggests that a Mediterranean style diet, I've heard this, fish, olive oil, avocados, fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, and whole grains is beneficial. But what about social and mental activities? Do they help at all? So we gotta think about our diet and then activities. So, social activities, a positive attitude, and learning new things. Previous research convincingly um, demonstrates that older people who engage in social activities have a positive mental attitude and work to learn new things, maintain their cognitive, cognitive abilities longer than those who are socially isolated, have a negative attitude, and do not try to do new things. However, several questions do remain. When is the ideal time to do these activities, in middle age or later in life? Does it help to do multiple activities, or is a single activity as good as several? And what about other common mental activities, such as reading books and playing games? Do they help too? I have to take what my Aunt Elizabeth says, and she's like 101 years old. She'll be 102 on her birthday coming up um, this year. So her big deal, she, likes, she, she, she reads the Bible and she does memory verses. And then another thing she does, she loves crossword puzzles. And so she'll sit down and do, she's, if she's by herself, she has to keep busy. She lives by herself, by the way. No one lives there to, to help her out. She got it going on. So she'll get her crossword puzzles out and handle those. She also has hobbies. She loves going to, um, to um, like yard sales and stuff like that. And she's a collector, and she likes to do a lot of research on these. She reads a lot of books. As a matter of fact, I've got some of her books. She let me have a box full of them last time I went down there to visit with her. And so that's what she does. She says, I, I keep my mind busy and occupied. And this is what she said. She said, you know, the Bible says something kind of bad about people who have idle minds. And I said, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right on that. So she says, when, or, or this says, when is the ideal time to these activities in middle age or later in life? Does it help to do multiple activities, which I do, it's probably the crazy stuff going on in my brain, or is a single activity good as several? And how about other common mental activities, such as reading books, playing games, do they help? So let's come down here and find out. Mentally stimulating activities, more is better. So a recently published study from researchers at Mayo Clinic followed 2,000 cognitively normal men and women aged 7 or older for about 5 years. Now, participants filled out surveys regarding their engagement in five common mentally stimulating pursuits. Social activities, reading books, playing games, making crafts, and using a computer. In midlife, between ages 50 and 65, and then in late life, ages 70 and above, the researchers also perform face-to-face -face evaluations 
every 15 months. Now these evaluations included neurologic interview and exam, detailed history of their abilities at home and in the community, and also mental testing for memory, language, attention, and executive function. So when the studies ended, the researchers looked at whether participants remained cognitively normal or developed mild cognitive impairment. It's called MCI. MCI is diagnosed when a concern about a person's thinking and memory is confirmed by testing that shows impairment on one or more tests of thinking and memory. However, day-to-day -day functioning is essentially normal and the person is not demanded. Okay, now the study yielded several important findings, engaging in two, three, or four, or five mentally stimulating activities in late life correlated with a lower risk of developing MCI. I find that's pretty interesting right now. Okay, that means mild cognitive impairment. A trend suggested a greater number of activities is linked to a greater reduction in risk. Now, that's in two, three, or four, or five mentally stimulating activities later in life. Now, three activities like computer use, social activities, and games had benefits when pursued in both midlife and late life. However, crafts were beneficial only in late life. Now, reading books showed no benefit. That's surprising. A dismaying finding to me is both an author and an avid reader. I kind of disagree with that one. The more I read, the, I feel like the, I, I have to read. I've got to be learning something continuously. Okay, now, this is what they say the bottom line is. Okay, if we want to keep our mind sharp and our memory strong, the evidence suggests that there is much we can do today. We can engage in regular aerobic exercise. We can eat a Mediterranean style diet. By the way, those folks walk every single place they go to. We can also work to learn new things and keep a positive mental attitude. And lastly, with a nod to this new research, we can pursue social activities, play games, use computers from midlife onward, and engage in crafts in late life. I did crafts now. Books, on the other hand, should be read whenever we're seeking knowledge, wisdom, enlightenment, or enjoyment. So, I love to read. I mean, I, it's just, it, it's my thing. And I have a, a library. This is only part of my library back here. Most of my books, I, I, I'm not into novels. I just don't do that kind of thing. I, I'm not into, like, romance, mysteries, or anything like that. What I like is anything that's going to benefit me when I can learn something. And that's why I really love this show, because I can go to, there's my book right there, um, right there. And that's on the Master Gardening class. I have several things. Here's a keyboard co um, course that I got. I found this book. The manual, anything to do with gardening, I, I'm, I'm just huge. I am just a fanatic when it comes to that. So I got this book right here, and it was suggested by Brian Brown. He was the person who actually um, taught us our classes. And so I found this book. You can go to thriftbooks.com, thriftbooks.com. And this is a manual of woody landscape plants, their identification, or ornamental characteristics, culture, propagation, and uses right here. And I'm going to tell you, I love it. It's by uh, Michael A. Durr, D-I-R-R. So I found this book. The regular price on this book, if you go buy this new, it's going to be somewhere around 100 bucks by the time you pay tax and everything else. It's, I think it's like 90-something dollars, but I found it on thriftbooks.com. That's thriftbooks.com. It was like $14. It's used. I don't care. When I start using a book, it's going to look used anyway. I mean, this huge manual that I got right here from the um, Master Gardening class, it's, it's huge. And I'm going to tell you what I had to do. It's such a big book. This is not... This right here, I had to go buy this because the book started coming apart. It was so thick. And this thing is it's just chock full of great, great ideas. It's, I'll be using this book the rest of my life and we'll pass it down to people. Um, but it's, it's all about tried and proven ways to have a garden. And I think we all need to be thinking about stuff like that right now. It's going to help you with your brain function, 
anything you are learning, anything that you're putting in here, you're making a use in anything you can think that you can possibly teach to someone. Teaching about plant life and about having a garden and how to how to preserve your food. All those things are extremely important and we've got to learn those things so we can bring that on down to other people. Could come a time in, in, in our lives, in this particular lifetime right now, where the supply chain could go down. It could be that if the supply chain goes down, you can't find food. You need to learn how to grow your own food. I'm telling you, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And if you have any questions about that, why don't you send me an email? Donna at Donna's Edge.com. That's Donna at Donna's Edge.com. Let's keep those brain cells going. Stop thinking about you. I know we've got to know what's going on in the world. That's a gimme. And I especially have to because um, it's part of my what I do. Um, but don't dwell on it. Find other things to do. And just get out and have a good social life. And love music. Music's what it's all about, too. Okay, thank you so much for watching The Edge. My name is Donna, and I am your host. Love being with you every day, Monday through Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. Central, as I get to ride home with you every afternoon. You take care, okay? And I'll see you on the other side.